number 12 of the podcast. It's been such an exciting week. We've still been fizzing on the, the hype that was E3 last week. Oh um, my gosh, still fizzing. Still Absolute brain looting for 50 it. 50 games. I know we said it last week, yeah. but 50 games, that is so many. We covered 10 of our favourites last week, um, which obviously was a huge chunk of the podcast. We'd love to keep doing every single one. This week we're only going to do five of our next kind of top picks. Yeah, yeah, our next top picks. Some some big uh, launch exclusives. Some so many launch just exclusives. Like, there's exclusives. just so much, and yeah. I'm so excited. Um, of course, we, we haven't talked much yet about... Um, also, the acquisition of those five new studios. Oh, that's um, exciting. Microsoft studios. So we will get around to that. We will for get sure. around to that. But that's something else that's super exciting. When you're talking about exclusive and what's coming to Xbox, obviously, that's such a massive um, acquisition. Acquisition, that, yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's going to enable us to pump out more games, more exclusive mm. games, um, a wider variety as well. Like, we've got everything Absolutely. from racing so forza to yeah. we happy few so like yeah. dystopian With things like state of decay uh, in between yeah. and yeah it's incredible Man, it's... and we're very excited and of course what that means and something you guys pointed out in the comments as well is game pass oh my god game pass those um you know microsoft titles that are coming day one on launch so we've yeah. already seen sea of thieves and state of decay 2 we're gonna see forza horizon 4 on october 22nd i believe i'm gonna definitely have to clarify yeah, that yeah um but very very soon next week we're filming on tuesday i've looked at it on the 26th of june captain spirit is coming out and that's 100 percent free to play uh for everyone absolutely so that's something that maybe that's what we're doing yeah, on the podcast I'll, next week i've I'll, just decided i was um, gonna say is there, is there <laughs> is gonna be any promises <laughs> is there gonna be any promises just promise there yeah. you go typical hannah style so yeah we're gonna talk through five more of the e3 announcements from last week which we are super excited about and very, very much looking forward to. But first of all, let's talk through question of the week this week, Fletch. Absolutely. So this week's question of the week, my friend, um, is what has been your favourite update to Office 365? Oh my God, such a good question. I uh, I know Hannah probably told me this yesterday, but I totally uh, did, did not listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm, it goes you know both what? ways, man. It goes I'm, both ways. Yeah, it goes both ways, but I'm going to go... 70% listening, 30% talking, <laughs> which clearly neither of us do. Probably especially me, but anyway, sorry. No, no. 70% listening. Okay, so I'm going to go for some, some really cool, simple stuff here. Yeah. Um, there's obviously so many awesome, big features... Um, that have been released, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially since 2016 came out with 365. But we talk a lot about inking. Yeah. Um, I use PowerPoint a lot. Yeah. Inking in PowerPoint is probably one of the more, more detailed platforms. So, you know, you've got ink to shape, ink to text, uh, equations, ink replay. Yeah. But did you guys know that when you are drawing things with your pen or you're, you know, writing something out, you can then press, what's the button called, Hannah? The, the one the on the bottom? It's the select button. The select um, button. If you're looking at a surface pen, this is not close enough for you to really see, but it's the one here. The one um, right no, down where you're, tip. yeah, like where you'd probably position your index finger um, when, you're, yeah. when you're writing. Um, that makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, you can hold that button down and then circle what you've done, so the shape or the text. Mm. And you'll notice that it, it selects it, it senses that there's stuff inside, and then a little button will appear. And that's, um, like, it's a, a button which is, like, ink to whatever. Yeah. And it's a great shortcut, so you can click on that, it'll automatically give you the options of what it could be, so it could just stay as ink. Yeah. Um, or it, it'll say, um, we know this is a shape, so ink to shape. Yeah. Or we know this is text, ink to text, so... What it's, I love so much yeah. about that, and sorry to interrupt no, you. No worries. Thirty percent. Just getting into my here. rhythm. Uh, and then but just, what I love so much uh, about that, Fletch, I'm sorry, no. is that, that those features have actually been available for a while now. Yeah. Um, and I know that us shouting that out kind of makes it be like, but hasn't that been there before? Um, but having this one little button to do it, kind of as as you're yeah. in the flow of things, I think is really important, and I think it's going to mean that more people are going to use that feature. Absolutely, like it's just taking out, you know, taking out the the steps to, to get to what you want to achieve. Like yeah. it's so awesome when you've you've got stuff that uh, just makes the whole process easier. 
Working that's, smarter, that's, not yeah, working smarter, not like harder. Working smarter, not harder. Like, that's, that's the cool thing about that feature is, yes, like Hannah said, it's been there for ages. Yeah. Um, since 2015, the end of 2015, is that, is that, or is that a bit maybe gumptious to say? Possibly. Yeah. Unsure. If Unsure. anybody knows, please let That's, us know. That would be a good shout, um, yeah. But yeah, those are, those are, and, and to shape, I think, is possibly a little bit more recent. Yeah, yeah. But maybe, like, time flies when you're having fun, so it maybe does. 2015. We always get We're surprised, sure. like, oh my god, it's been a year since blah, blah, blah. We're halfway yeah. through 2018. Yes, that's crazy. That's yeah. very crazy. I shift into my house on the 20th of July. <laughs> Yay! That's, that's the good thing about being halfway through this year. Absolutely, um, absolutely. We're nearly coming up yeah. to the third anniversary of Windows 10. Yeah. That's another yeah. promise that I'm just going to come out and make. Maybe we'll do a special episode for that. I don't know. Just what we'll, a, what we'll a, see. a podcast of ideas. Absolutely. Mm. Well, but what's, what's yours, Hep? What's yours? I think... In thinking about this, there's definitely a few changes that have collectively made a big change to Office. Yeah. Um, I think. And I think that there's been a lot of work put into the user interface. And that kind of goes with what you're talking about is once again that working smarter, not harder. Really cool features like Quick Starter. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Quick Starter, Researcher, all of those kinds of things. So open up a, a PowerPoint, open up a Word document, and you'll see how, how fresh and clean and easy yeah. it looks to interact. Make sure your office is fully up to date so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm looking at a document now, and all I can see is home, new, and open. And then blank presentation, welcome to PowerPoint. So it's really nice, it looks really clean. Yeah. And that was like a very small change that was just made overnight. Like it wasn't yeah. shouted out or anything. Um, and like we kind of noticed it, I was like, Bleach, have you seen this? Like, is this different? Am I going crazy? Like, what's going on? And so I think that that's a huge change. Like, it's something that we're all using every day for maybe the tasks we don't necessarily want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, Office is very much known as a productivity suite, but we've talked a lot about how Office can be useful in your day-to-day. -day. Uh, and by making day-to-day -day tasks easier to do, um, you know, once again, working smarter, not harder. Um, but the other UI changes they've made to yeah. make you work smarter, not harder, once again, is all of those side pain things. Yeah. And those have been kicking around for a while, but we've seen more and more of them come through, like Researcher, for example. So going through, having information in that side pain, there's now also a Wikipedia. A Wikipedia one, which I was, I was yeah. having a good play with um, over the last, last week or so, which is very cool. Yeah. Like, it is very similar to Researcher, but I'd say it's almost like a little bit toned down. Yeah. Um, so that it's just like, it's it's there as a resource that absolutely anyone could yeah. very easily use. Just um, pop into, open up, similar to yeah. uh, Smart Lookup as well. Yeah. And the, the reason that we talk about those kinds of things and how valuable they are is I am a procrastinator. In case you haven't been able to tell, like <laughs> I have to really focus on a task. Like I'm someone who would much prefer to like, work really hard for an hour and then go and get a coffee and have a chat for the next yeah. half hour. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the kind of person I am. So as soon as I open up a web page, I'm going on Facebook, I'm checking out all of those things that I shouldn't necessarily be doing. Um, so having all of like researcher options, Wikipedia yeah. options, smart lookup options, sharing options, so much designer options, like <laughs> so many things all in one place all within the document so you can do so much more without having to minimize and go into other things which I just think is a super powerful tool and the development of that like and I'm not sure if this is true or correct um, but I think that's probably come from snapping within Windows 10 and how productive yeah, we yeah. saw that being where you can snap two windows side by side four windows side by side if you uh, feel the need you know you can change it yeah. to what you're working more on that's such a powerful productivity tool being able to easily do that instead of resizing the windows and all of that kind of thing uh, so i think yeah the ui changes have really just changed the way that you can use office and how useful it can be for everything that you yeah. do and like i think a lot of that as well has come from the feedback tools in office right so oh. there's some great feedback tools in office that are super easy to use mm. um and i think a lot of the realization was you know even though um office before was still awesome when you open it up and there's all these templates and stuff appearing around it gets mm. a little intimidating for, for people who um you know they, they'll just see a lot of content and be like oh my god this is hard yeah. whereas when you you take out that you know bombardment of your senses and yeah. keep it nice and simple yeah. then all of a sudden everyone feels like it is 
mm. super simple to use, even if it's not necessarily Absolutely. changed as a program. And so. on that as well, they've mm. also simplified all of the icons within the ribbon. Um, I saw a really yeah. cool infographic with what they look like in like Office 2003 to 2007 to 2010 to 13 to 16. Um, and the way that the icons look and what they represent and how you can customize your ribbon as well. Because um, like there are so many people out there who will open a blank Word document, type out what they need, maybe change the font, yeah. maybe change the size, and that's what they use Office for. And that's the reality of it, right? Like, yeah. If, if that's what you need it for, that's what you need it for. But I think the office is, has worked really hard to, to allow people to get the most out of what they've paid for um, by putting all of these awesome things in. So being able to do so much more from within your documents uh, and really get the most out of it, like tell me, um, which has now just changed to search, um, just to make it really obvious as to what it is. Um, that came out with Office 2016. So if I want to insert a picture, I can literally type in insert a picture and that's directly where it takes me to. Awesome, awesome. So many great things in Office. Of course, we always extend the question of the week to you guys. What have your favourite updates been to Office 365? Rated M for Mature. I am absolutely going to talk over Hannah for the entirety <laughs> of this trailer. <laughs> because I'm excited. Uh, we Isn't happy few. I'm excited and I'm oh terrified. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I just cannot express how excited I am for this game. It's hitting me in a, not in the field. Well, it kind of is because it reminds me, uh, of course, of Bioshock and, and that great series. Yeah. The great twists and the turns. Um, the settings, you know, being in the 1950s. Uh, 1960s, sorry, not 50s. The is where it's kind of based. Um, and that very um, happy television vibe coming through. Um, and there's a guy named Uncle Jack who's sort of a main, a main character in the series, yeah. which is kind of all I know so far based on that. Yeah. Um, but very very much trying to pretend to that everything's people. okay when it's not they and uh, it's said that it's very much no. designed to be a game to be replayed and replayed um, yeah. because from compulsion games you just don't know what you're going to get and once again your choices are within the world you kind of change how it's going to be yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, I remember I completed Bioshock 2 uh, six different times to get all the endings. that's how, how into it I was so looking at you know there's that one um, so we're practically the only evil figure, I'd say, who works with Uncle Jack, um, you know, having the joy pills uh, instead of Adam, um, even the art, the theme. It's going to be so cool that, that, you yeah, like Hannah said, the veneer of everything's good, it's, 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 it's the golden era, except they're trying to distract you from me. Yeah, and even, going. even the fact, like, you'll, you'll see characters wearing masks in there, and at the start of the trailer, you hear her talking about, like, just put on a mask, it makes you happy, it's all smile. okay, like, have you had your joy today? Like, yeah. that creeps me out. Uh, uh, I love it. I like, uh, it's so up my alley. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very just, cool premise for a game, like, is everything how it seems, is it not? What are you going to yeah. do? How are you going to decide? And... Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, it's happening in England. I just want to yeah, shout that out absolutely. quickly, which is totally different to most games like this that we've seen in the past. Yeah, the Beatles era, I think, is yeah. pretty awesome. So it is coming out. Join the fun on the 10th of August. Very, very soon. Another absolute banger coming back. <laughs> banger! Banger, that's right. The Division 2. I am super excited. Uh, to get back on this train, when the first division came out, all my mm. friends got on board and we, we formed a, a squad, we were part of the division of course, going after all the, the baddies in post-apocalyptic America. I really love this kind of play on history vibe. Um, like, look at how beautiful this looks and how intense it's going to be, you know, using real world places uh, and just dramatising it for effect, basically. Yeah. Um, but badass. And I know this scene here um, is something that Hannah has talked about a lot because she's actually been on one of the Air Force One planes, which of course is what the US president flies on. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Not a grounded plane, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but like, just look at you know how, how you kind of, as you said, like create your squad and go through. Uh, tell us a little bit more, please. I, I think it's a great um, scene to, to actually be showing because it shows the desperation that um, the yeah. people in America are feeling at yeah. this time. The US president, obviously, um, his plane is down. Um, you're you're yeah. really trying to stop the agents further um, destroying what semblance of the country you have that, yeah. that remains. Very um, much that, that modern fall of civilization that's yeah. going on. And you still get to play with all that really awesome tech. So 
um, like they say, history uh, will. will remember. It will remember you are playing with your badass a group of mates. All the all the cool weapons you're going around. It looks like there's going to be even more cool new gadgets. I'm I'm really looking forward to deep diving and seeing how this uh, continues on the series. Okay, Hannah, I feel like I've started everything, but it's another classic game series. Famous franchise with a female lead character. That, of course, is yeah. something I'm always excited about. A woman in power, a woman who is badass. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah, do you know if this is the same woman who's going to be in the new Tomb Raider films? Maybe we can, can say if I'm right, because I think it is from, I get that feeling. Because um, okay. there is going to be a new Tomb Raider movie coming out, yeah. um, which is going to be super cool as well. But I'm, I'm super looking forward to this game. One of my favourite things about Tomb Raider and this, you know, new iteration is how cinematic the whole experience is. Yeah. You actually feel like you are in a movie. Um, everything is, is just feels epic as you're doing it. It's got like a really like, epic saga feel to it. In true 4K, guys, like this is amazing. How clear and clean and pristine this looks. So that Xbox One X gaming experience. Woo! And I'm, I'm really excited to see it making a return back to, you know, the, the Central and Southern Americas. This time we're going to be um, looking into uh, past Mayan, um, yeah. I don't know, past Mayan culture and archaeology. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool because my first experience with Tomb Raider when I was a kid was actually the, um, the movie with Angelina Jolie when she was doing something super similar, um, similar to what this game seems to be based on. So really excited to get back into it. You're still going to be sneaking around, using the elements to your advantage. You're going to be um, fighting an all new villain. Jaguars, I like. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just distracted now. Like, I'm just amazed, and I think that it's so cool um, that we're seeing, like, thanks once again. I'm just going on and on about the yeah. power and amazingness that is 4K and how much that's going to change our gameplay. Yeah. You know, the the seasons, the weather, all of those sorts of things. It's because you can experience them kind of to the fullest of full that you've yeah. never been able to before. And, and as you've been seeing um, through this trailer, it's not all just about, you know, combat and fighting. You've still got the puzzles, you've still got the different yeah. challenges you need to figure out. Stuff that I find really, really cool. Um, in the game of the world, right? Games has never always been about fighting. It's been a super fun aspect, but yeah. it's been about the challenge of it as well. And having all these challenges um, still in true oh. Tomb Raider style is going to be awesome. Uh, I like. I, I, I just can't help comparing how this will be similar to the old game, but growing on it. Yeah. Um, you know, when you were going through that, uh, some of those final scenes, fighting Shadow these, these Japanese um, samurai and all sorts, it was awesome. And watching that scene, you know, that sun, um, the eclipse coming up, yeah. I feel like you're going to get that same awesome vibe yet yeah. again. Just Cause for another great series coming back to us. Mm. Another one I'm really, really excited about. As you guys know by now, I'm very much a story-driven gamer. So games like Just Cause 4, We Happy Few, all those those things that have come out in E3, yeah. I'm super excited for. And Just Cause 4 looks like it's going to really deliver on what we're used to from the franchise and, and introduce a few new things. Like You see that whirlwind there? You're absolutely going to be able to... Oh, sorry, tornado. For the tornado that's yeah. going to take you on a whirlwind of an adventure. And yeah. I think that's a really key point that it makes. Um, similar to Forza Horizon 4, but you can use the weather to your advantage in the game as well. Yeah, so you can interact with all those natural disasters. It's got a really good physics engine, which is going to enable you to actually climb up into that world and as we'll see soon but you still get that absolute chaos that disaster um that just you know pure fun of i feel like this is like the michael bay of games yeah that's, that's <laughs> like a great description action destruction you are that guy who is crazily overpowered um surviving all gliding. sorts of ridiculous situations <laughs> that gliding very important because that is absolutely making a comeback uh, I remember in uh, Just Cause 3, gliding, gliding all over the place, so it's, yeah. it's great to see it coming, making a return. Um, I'm just waiting for the scene of, of uh, Rico going up into a tornado, because I'm super excited to, to shout that out. But look at all that natural destruction. Here we go, he's flying up into it. He's absolutely uh, causing, causing chaos wherever he goes, uh, and, and still fighting 
you know, that dictator. Um, it's like a Spanish drama um, just going off the chains. Super dramatic, December 4th, 2018. This year is so exciting, right in time for Christmas. Battlefield 5, everybody I think gets excited when there's a new Battlefield out. It is, uh, every game we've talked about yeah. besides We Happy Few today has been on great the franchise. franchises. Yeah. And Battlefield is, is no different. I'm super excited, it's going back to World War II, which my first experience with Battlefield was um, 1943 and, and those similar ones way back when it was um, more of a PC based game. Yeah. So I'm super excited that it's going back to those roots. It's also the natural transition because Battlefield 1 of course was in World War 1. So it's going to be really really cool. There's a lot of you know that grand scale, being able to get in tanks, um, still making a turn. Of course it's going to be a great multiplayer experience. But I'm really looking forward to War Stories making it yeah. come so, And being such a huge fan yeah. of history, um, it is very important that they have tried to focus this on real stories. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you guys remember from Battlefield 1, War Stories was a, a bit of a change from you know Hardline and Battlefield 4 where you're following one person through a whole campaign. Now it's looking at different war stories from actual World War II all the way from the Arctic Circle um, to, to the rest of Europe um, where you will be able to step in the shoes of a historic figure and journey through, through their World War II experience. And it will follow a similar suit to the last time we went from tanks to biplanes to infantry to all sorts. So it's going to be that again. And I am super excited. I actually played that uh, a heck of a lot. But of course I'm just excited to do the, the great multiplayer as well. Which is some, what we're seeing now. That, yeah. that awesome, amazing gameplay. I, I'm a huge fan of history like Hannah said. So these tanks, these planes I'm seeing are making me drool. Um, and just just a lot of that realism, you know. Um, yeah, that, I that think obviously kind of we're we're incredibly privileged to experience this through a game. Uh, and but not I, in real life. And yeah. not in real life, <laughs> but I believe that it's incredibly important to, to remember history yeah. and learn about it. Uh, and, and look at that lady. I can't I can't help but say that that was a meaty club and <laughs> a, a free free clawed hand. So uh, I I would say she's someone coming out of a badass Norway a partisans. Those, those were some fantastic trailers though, Hannah. Like, oh, oh my gosh. I don't know um, what I was expecting from E3. Um, and I will, I've just realised as soon as I said that, that that means that I have to admit that I've never fully experienced an E3 conference before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wasn't expecting so many trailers. And then in my head I was just like, what else were you expecting, Hannah? Um, but as, as we said, you know, we got to do that incredible event where we got to see them in a cinema with surround sound and it was so awesome. I'm not going to lie, I went home and I watched it again. Yeah, I watched yeah, the whole yeah. announcement again. I've watched so many of these trailers so many times <laughs> since. Um, and we just, we're excited. Um, and I know that we probably overuse that word in this podcast. Yeah. But my gosh, what, like, now that it's settled in a bit fletch, what are you most excited for? I won't judge you. I know it's oh. like a parent asking to pick a favourite child, but I'm lucky is, enough to be the favourite child in my family. So <laughs> It is really hard. It is really hard. Mm. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I think what I'm looking forward to most is actually We Happy Few. Okay. And the whole reason behind that is because I am a humongous Bioshock fan. Yeah. And We Happy Few reminds me so much of Bioshock and like the the kind of um, scenes that you pick up, the, the, the art in it, the way it's yeah. animated. Um, I feel like the storyline's gonna, gonna mess with your head the same. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm really excited. You're very much a story-driven game kind of guy. I am. Um, so, oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited for that. So, and like, what amazes me about those trailers is I always get hyped up watching them again. Yeah. Like, they've got amazing ability to make me excited, mm. um, hype me up, make me look forward to the game playing out, uh, make me think I don't have enough money, but thank God for Game Pass. Uh, yeah, absolutely, um, Game Pass! <laughs> and so, like, really, really cool. Um, but, like, yeah, I know we say this all the time, but I've really enjoyed the podcast today, and I've really enjoyed um, not just talking about games, because we love talking about games, particularly 
um, me. Um, and I mean, uh, and me we've now got to talk. Gamer. Yeah, we, we've got to talk about <laughs> We Happy Few, which is what I'm looking forward to most. Mm. So very exciting about that. But um, I also like how we've kind of you know really drilled drilled back in how we looked at Office today and, and just mm. went there. It's been how, a while since we've given anything. Else yeah, it, it definitely feels like mm. that. Um, but you know, going back and looking at how the user interface has changed, how mm. we're you know continuously tr tweaking features tweaking how we interact with different Microsoft software mm. um, to make that user experience better, easier, work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, is, is just really, really awesome, really, really cool. And I think that has more impact than so much else when it comes to actually uh, utilizing a program. Absolutely. And it's always the little things. Always the little things. It's always the little things. And, you know, like when you learn a new skill or discover a new feature that's going to make you be able to work smarter, not harder. Um, let's count how many times we've yeah. said that today. Um, but when you find those hidden little gems, and especially, you know, in the sales process when you're qualifying your customers and talking to them, and just that one little tip that you can give them can just open, like, and even for yourselves and how you're using those things. And I think that, like, I consider myself really lucky and I've, I've nearly been kind of in this realm for the last five years now. It's coming up on five years, uh, which I'm really excited about. And just how much changed and kind of coming on that journey and every time I look back at what's changed and thinking about how it was that blows my mind and it, it, as we've said like it's so often those little things um, that have really made the difference and how people are gonna use the technology that's out there and that's what I love so much about this job as well is hearing from you guys hearing from customers hearing from people out there in the real world how this stuff um, is being utilized to its full potential uh, which I just think is inspiring and awesome and amazing. So please, as always, we do extend that question of the week to you. Let us know what your favorite updates in Office have been. Let us know what games you're most looking forward to from E3 as well. Um, mine, I didn't I didn't jump in there and yeah, say sorry. it. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Um, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. I know uh, that that was only talked about last week, but a little bit of a Disney princess. Yeah. Um, but I'm just a nice kid. <laughs> it's something we all can relate to. I do have uh, the Disney castle tattooed on me. Um, that's as the whole different story <laughs> um, but I just think that and I, I can see it in a lot of games yeah. um, that are coming out and that were announced at E3 that there is so much coming that just hit you on the hit you in the feels they play on nostalgia um, and they're really bringing back you know like Halo Infinite um, Devil May Cry 5 that's one that we that's get a, to that's talk a big about one. Yeah. Um, but some of these really famous franchises that people have known and loved for so long um, are coming into a whole new generation of gamers so super excited absolutely cannot wait cannot wait to share this journey of these games releasing with you guys um, and always as always looking looking forward to talking to you some more next week right absolutely we will yeah. see you guys next week <laughs>